It's your boy Rodney Darkchild Jerkins. Make sure you tune in to Nouveau TV to check out my finale, House of Joy, and keep it locked right here on Bossive.com. Man, you know what? It's been 19 years, almost 20 years in the music industry. And I think, you, you know, staying relevant is really because as a, as, a, as a child prodigy, I studied so much music from like, you know, I was studying artists from the 60s, producers from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So I think all that knowledge just kind of like went into my brain. And, um, and for me, I think being, you know, being relevant is understanding where culture is going. So, you know, and, and, and knowing, having the pace of where music is and where it's going. I always tell people, the youngins that come up under me, they say, yo, I, I want to do a record for so-and-so. I say, don't do what's now. Do what you think is next. Working, you know what, working with Brandy and, and I think we worked together in 1997 was life changing because it was, you know, she was coming off of the I Want to Be Down album and nobody really knew about me and I, and I actually told Brandy, I was like, you need to get in the studio with me. I got that fire for you. <laughs> you know, next thing you know, we're in the studio doing five records in like five days. Um, it, and it changed my life. You know, I did The Boy's Mind with her and Monica. That was a huge success for us. And, um, and then that just segued into the next, you know, and a couple years later I'm working with Michael Jackson and it doesn't really get any bigger than that. And I, I was working, at, working with Michael Jackson at 20 years old. So, you know, to, to, to have that childhood dream to work with someone like Michael and then it actually come true was life changing. The process of working with Michael Jackson was so intense because he pushed me to the limit, like creatively. Michael would call me at four o'clock in the morning and say, play me what you got. And I'm like, oh, I'm about to go to sleep, you know? And, but that's how he was. He was so into the creative zone. I never forget one time I was working on some stuff for him and he said, it needs a fresh sound, it needs a fresh sound. You need to go outside and hit some things. And I said, what you mean? He's like, find a junkyard and go and bang on some things. Create the new snare, create the new kick. And so I, I went to the junkyard in Jersey, me and my, my cousin Richard, we went to the junkyard, I took a DAP machine, and most of the stuff that uh, I did with him, the snares were made out of um, junkyard materials. So he, and he pushed me to that, and he told me the video because he wanted to actually see me out there getting these sounds for him. And um, working with him was the best experience of my life. He actually taught me publishing. Um, the business of publishing. He told me, you know, how to retain it, how to create a new company, how to buy catalogs. He taught me that at a young age. And so my success on the publishing side is really due, you know, to him teaching me that game. Oh, yeah. I, it's funny because I remember when the show first came on, I got a tweet from someone that says, I was a fan until I knew you married someone that wasn't black. And I was like, wow, we still live in that day? Like, is that, you know, is that really what um, Martin Luther King marched for? Is that really what we have a, a black president in the White House for? Like, we still live in that day? And you know, you're gonna, rec you're gonna receive those. I have, I have kids that are, are, are mixed. We're both minorities though. But we have kids that are gonna deal with that. They're gonna grow up with that. And so, you know, and I think well, the reason why we did the show is to show people how it works how it works with the bilingual, bi the bicultural family and that experience. So I, you know, it's 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 all it's all good, you know.